Right now I'm a baker. I'm a child of immigrants in this country. I used to be really good at soccer and I used to um, dream of being a professional soccer player up until I was like 17. I had some colleges that wanted me to go, um, but in the critical moments, like we couldn't afford to like get me up there to like stay at the camps. I was like, wow, I guess that's it. You know, what do I do? My parents have worked so hard and they were still struggling a little bit financially and my mom's an accountant. I was like, well, I'll be an accountant. This is what I'm gonna do. My mom did it. We need money. I'm not going to play soccer. This is what I'm gonna do. KPMG interviewed me. I got a job with KPMG and I was like, well, I guess this is it. But I was, then I was kind of like, oh man, that, but you know, I, damn man, like I really like cooking. I really like food. I started having all those thoughts. But for now, I'm gonna go work. So I, I started working. I worked at KPMG for almost two years. It got miserable. I had been taking the CPA exam. I'll say it on camera, I had a 48. I don't care. So bad, right? I was not having a good day. You know, like emotionally, it was tough, man. Like, you know, you failed so hard. It was a weird feeling. I was not happy with the job. Um, so that's when I left KPMG. I was like, I'm gonna, that's, I literally, t I called my brother. I was like, dude, I'm opening a bakery. I, that's the first time I ever said that, like, and I thought I meant it. Like, then you start to understand how that degree becomes so useful. That stuff gets real when you sit down and you're like, all right, how do I open a bakery? And you're like, what's the first thing I need to do? Well, the first thing you need to do, uh, most people will say, is have at least six months of working capital in a bank account. It's intimidating. It's like, dude, I started looking into all that. I was like, I'm broke and I have student loan debt for an accounting degree. I need to go back into accounting. I was like, dude, I have to, go, I have to get money. I kind of like snapped out of it too. I, you know, I kept taking the CPA exam, kept failing it. Um, I failed it 13 times in a row. And then, <laughs> don't feel bad for laughing. It was, like, it was insane. Then uh, a job offer came to me. It was like a transition into industry. So I took a big pay increase, looked nice. I didn't feel depressed anymore. I was just like, all right, this is, right. This is bearable. It's a really Got out of your slump. Wasn't really think, I was still baking every day. Like I'd make croissants at home. I would, you know, bake pies, cakes, cookies, whatever, bread. But I never revisited the whole like, yo, I need a bakery. Cause I was so, I was like, I need money first. The only way to get money is to work in accounting. That's how my brain worked. Then um, I passed the whole CPA exam, Woo! man. Woo, yeah, it was great. Um, and less than a year after passing, I quit accounting for good. <laughs> I, I was like, yo, I know how to bake. Let me take pictures of my bread to, to document like my progress. I made an Instagram. That's when I got into sourdough. I you know, started throwing stuff in the bowl and like letting it rise and playing around. I had no clue what I was doing with my life. You know, my following was like a thousand people. I would post a little bit more on Instagram and start to make it look a little bit better. And that's like a resume now. I, like I baked every day when I could and posted almost every day something. Like I had to like go to sleep knowing I did something to like further my baking endeavor, even if it was just posting a picture. And one day I was baking, I was like, man, let me make some pan de coco. I haven't made that in a long time. That was like the deal breaker for me. Like I made it with sourdough. I posted a video of it and it just like exploded. People like freaked out over that. Following starts increasing, people start contacting me. What do you want? It's just a video of bread. <laughs> the recipe, the recipe, the recipe, the recipe. It's like the recipe, how do you put, oh, blog. I start my little LLC, you know, baking blog company. No working capital, right? There's no inventory here, it's just the internet. So I was like, this is a little bit smarter. And so I've since been able to use that platform and turn it into a business, which is crazy. It's easier to start than a physical restaurant, but you use the same principles. I can bake, I can share my baked goods with people, I can help people bake better bread. And then I got on a podcast. And then a book publishing company contacted me in March. And they're like, this, your story is great. Like, your blog, your following is exploding. Like, who are you? What is this bread? Like, let's do a book. And I was like, let's do the book, <laughs> right? Let's do the book. I went, so it's like, I went from barely believing in what I was doing and not having much money. I'm not rich. I barely have money still, but it's like, I have a plan. I have a business model now. It's scary to like be out there and like put your, your name on a website and be like, these are my recipes. I don't know, like, I don't know if it's gonna work. Sometimes you just don't know if things are gonna work, but like, this is what I do. There's so much pressure in baking and so much science and math and it intimidates people. And so the way I write things is I try to let them know it's gonna be okay. <laughs> it's just a loaf of bread. Just put it in the bowl and see what happens. 
because you made it. And however it tastes, it's gonna be delicious. <laughs>